Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing great today. Today we are back in Dragon Age Origins and we are continuing our current journey. Last time we left off, we were at the... what seemed like an end of covering the village of Lothring. I don't know if there's anything else left. I will try to scour my way around it just to see if there's anything I missed. But other than that, or if it is everything, as of right now, then we will move on to that bridge that we spotted with a blood mage on it. I am mighty curious about what is going on over there. <laughs> so, let's get into it. Alright, here we are. Let's see if there are any chests for us to open. Like, I would have suspected that one, but I guess not really. Child... Is this the red-headed child? I wanna go home. I'm sorry, I found your mother. Okay, so... This might be it for us for now. Let's check the board for a second, just to see if there's anything else that showed up. But other than that, I think we can move on. I still haven't decided where I want to go. Nothing on the board. Can I possibly lockpick this? I am ready. With my dearest. Right away. Okay. He didn't get pissed. I guess that wasn't his then. Uh, speaking of which... We have 13 of them. And... Just one regular injury kit. I wonder... Shall we go? If he sells more. Huh. Don't suppose you're looking to buy something? Maybe. Alright. Just don't buy everything up. So do you want me to buy stuff or not? <laughs> I already bought him out from the injury kits. Oh wow, okay. Thanks Liliana. Um, there is something else that I wanted to check before moving on, so give me one second and I'll be right back. Alright, I think I know what is up. Stealing is what I want. So let's see. I want to see if there's anything from this guy. Mm -hmm. Success! What did you get? I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. Actually got a whole lot of stuff. That is really awesome. Also... Someone mentioned that the second weapon for Alistar would be better as a crossbow, which he can't currently wear, not this one anyway, but that makes a lot of sense because he's not very dexterous, obviously. So, let's see if we can try and steal something else from people. All right, Liliana, I guess you don't have any problem stealing from your fellow Chantrymen. As you like. <laughs> I love it! So many health potions. This is amazing. Okay, I am going to go around town trying to steal whatever I can, and if there's anything interesting happening, I will let you guys know. You are very beautiful, Morrigan. Tell me something I do not know. But you are always dressed in such rags. It suits you, I suppose. A little tear here, a little rip there to show some skin. I understand. You understand I lived in a forest, I hope. Maybe we could get you in a nice dress one day. Silk. No, maybe velvet. Velvet is heavier, better to guard against the cold in Ferelden. Dark red velvet. Yes. 
with gold embroidery. It should be cut low in the front, of course. We don't want to hide your features. Stop looking at my breasts like that. It is most disturbing. You don't think so? And if it's cut low in the front, we must put your hair up. Show off that lovely neck. You are insane. I would sooner let Alistair dress me. It'll be fun, I promise. We'll get some shoes too. <gasps> shoes. We could go shopping together. <laughs> oh my. Um. Liliana swings both ways, doesn't she? All right, so I did not steal from uh, the elder or I did not steal from the lady who was looking for poison. I felt bad. It's probably unreasonable, but <laughs> I I tend to feel bad for a lot of characters. So um, I did steal from the merchant and from the bartender. So that was pretty good. And uh, I didn't really find a whole lot of good stuff, but there was some money and there was just a few goodies that I could find. But uh, other than that, I think we are done with Lothring. So let's check out what that blood mage is doing and uh, figure out what to do about him. Oh god. That's um, right, of course. Who is the blood mage? Oh, he died! Well, shit! Alright. And these are guys just standing there like doofuses. Okay. So, let's see. What can we do? We have this. Morrigan, I want you to come over here. And you... I suppose you're fine. Maybe pin him. Alistar? You're doing just fine, except you are in your <laughs> bow stage. Let's go shield bash him. Doggy. Charge? I haven't tried that yet. So that's fine. Now, can we paralyze the alpha? Okay. Now, I don't need to attack him anymore. Okay, Alistair chose to go this way. I'm gonna go this way too. And so will Morrigan. Morrigan, can you paralyze? I don't believe so, but maybe I can do it again. No, not yet. Well, I guess I can weaken you at least. Doggo. You are doing good. You're doing what you're supposed to. Liliana, uh, why don't you attack the same guy? No, actually, finish him first. <laughs> you have to yourself. All right. Um, you go threaten him. Dog, you can probably howl most nearby enemies. That sounds good to me. I think we're doing fine. Mighty timely arrival there, my friend. I'm much obliged. We did just fine. <laughs> Those guys look goofy. Okay, who are you? You're welcome. 
just how obliged exactly. I wasn't trying to save you, trust me. Well, I kind of was. You're welcome. The name's Bodon Fedek, merchant and entrepreneur. This here is my son, Sandal. Say hello, my boy. Hello. Road's been mighty dangerous these days. Mind if I ask what brings you out here? Perhaps we're going the same way. Hmm. I doubt you want to travel with the Grey Warden. Grey Wardens? Hmm. My, that does rather explain a lot. No offense, but I suspect there's more excitement on your path than my boy and I can handle. Allow me to bid you farewell and good fortune. Goodbye. Now then, let's get this mess cleaned up, shall we? We'll be off as How? soon as this mess is cleaned up. Thank you kindly for all your assistance. What are you doing? Oh, this is your cart. That's what. Okay. Blood mage. How are you traveling with a blood mage? Assuming she was traveling with you. I'm curious about it. Okay. All right, let's go back to the first person. Let's see. Um, how upset are you going to be if I search your crate? Presumably it's yours. Small card statuette. Small carving of a robed woman. Gifts can be so... Okay. Can I examine? No. Um... Well, they weren't upset, so that's good. I guess we move on? That's a long bridge. Gather your party and venture forth. Yes, please. Well, that's fun. Bad dreams, huh? Yeah. It seemed so real. Well, it is real, sort of. You see, part of being a Grey Warden is being able to hear the Darkspawn. That's what your dream was, hearing them. The Archdemon, it talks to the Horde, and we feel it just as they do. That's why we know this is really a blight. So did you have the same dream then? Why didn't Duncan tell everyone that? He did. He said he felt the Archdemon's presence. Everyone just assumed he was guessing. It takes a bit, but eventually you can block the dreams out. Some of the older Grey Wardens say they can understand the Archdemon a bit, but I sure can't. Anyhow, when I heard you thrashing around, I thought I should tell you. It was scary at first for me, too. So you did have the say dream. Thank you, Alistair. I appreciate it. That's what I'm here for. To deliver unpleasant news and witty one-liners. <laughs> Anyhow, you're up now, right? Let's pull up camp and get a move on. Right at night? Okay. We got a lot of quests. Um, let's see... Because I picked something up from that blood mage over there, so let's check it out. A king's confidant. Journey to Ban Loren's lands. There are rumors that a fellow survivors of Ostagar have escaped, has escaped the prisons of Ban Loren, and is seeking the aid of the Grey Wardens. The Ban's lands lie in the northwest reaches of the Banorn. The escaped prisoner has likely taken refuge in the deep woods of the estate. Okay. Soldier's Peak. Go to the party camp. The last time you traveled the open road, you caught a glimpse of a merchant in the distance. He appears to be following you. If you set up camp, he might be able to catch up to you. Ooh, that's helpful. Is that the guy who, um, who, <laughs> who thinks I have a bit too much ad adventure for his tastes? Talk to the dwarves. Odin and Sandal. What an unfortunate name. 
The two dwarves from outside of Lothring seem to have pulled their wagon to the outskirts of the camp. You should talk to them both to see what services they can offer. Hmm. I'm okay with that. So this is our camp. Dog, what you doing? You bark too much. So this is the spot where Morgan is away from everyone else. That's funny. Where we can talk to everyone. Okay. That's fine. Can I talk to Cuddle Bear? Oh, why you little What did you do? What? What? Your furry friend here took offense at me getting near his food. He snapped at me, look. I mean I don't blame him. <laughs> it was just a warning. He could have taken a hand off. And don't you think I don't know it? Sometimes I forget that he's a war dog. That'll teach me. I'm sorry, Alistair. But don't mess with his food. I once heard a really old legend about how the hound warriors in the days of the old tribes would feed their Mabari the flesh of the vanquished. Well, that's what I heard anyway. It would sometimes be human flesh. He's not a fan. Oh, like you can tell the difference. For all you know, maybe you've already been fed something. Someone. Oh, he's a softy. I'd never feed you another human being. It's not cannibalism if he's eating it, you know. He doesn't like it. Okay? <laughs> he doesn't. That's all there is to it. Okay, let's talk to the dwarves. Oh, wait. Levi Dryden? Is that the guy who's following me around? Okay, maybe. Um, let's go talk to them first. Ah, it's good to see you, my timely rescuer. Bodon Fedic, at your service once again. I saw your camp and thought to myself, what safer place to rest for the evening than in the camp of a Grey Warden? I'm perfectly willing to offer you a fine discount for the inconvenience of our presence. How does that sound? Good? Yes? I'll take it, but I don't think it's the safest place around. I tend to attract stuff. Let me see your wares, Bowden. Or... Nope, let me see your wares. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected. And with your discount. Thank you for reminding me. Now, do you sell inventory expansion? Tome of physical technique. Huh. Hand puppet? Amazing. <laughs> I kind of want to give it to Alistar. I, I want to do it. A stick? For dog? I'll give it to dog. Fat loot. Interesting. King Marek's shield. Alistar doll? I bet Morgan would love that. <laughs> Beard flask. Pet rock. That's amazing. Kunari prayers of the dead. Ah, I know who might appreciate that. Amulet of memories. The simple patterns along this locket outer edge are worn smooth, and a dark patina clouds the glass. Okay. A brandy. All right. Genealogy of kings. Protective cone. Oh, no. I don't think he would love that. <laughs> Orlean mask. Ugh. The chant of light. Liliana would like that, probably. Scented soap. Hmm. Cat lady. <laughs> oh, my God. A thoughtful gift. Mm. Ooh. Curious. A backpack. That's what I wanted. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Okay. We don't have a lot of money left anymore. That's probably just fine. 
Okay, so he sells a bunch of healing stuff. That makes sense. And I don't have money for much of anything else. That's expensive. Holy cow. Okay. Cool. Right. Let's go and see what kind of gifts we can give to people. Hello. The boy's a bit simple, but he's rather good with enchantments. One of those tranquil fellas actually called him a... What was it now? A savant. I had no idea such a thing existed. What enchantment does, does he do? I'd like to see what other goods you have. Okay. Yeah, what can you, what enchantments does he do? He can fold lyrium into almost any weapon or piece of armor. Though naturally some of the more extravagant materials will take more lyrium than others. It's a process that some of the master smiths back in Orzammar will perform. But my boy here is just as adept at it. Isn't that right, boy? Enchantment! And there you have it. That's cute. I want some enchanting done. I wonder what it takes. Okay. Oathkeeper. Is that the only one that can be enchanted? Alright. Cool. I have no runes for it. Good. How do I exit out of this? Alright, never mind. So, let's see. Oathkeeper. Can Alistar have it? Or is his better? No. His is not better. You can have it. Cool. Um. What do you want? You're a hard woman to find. Where are my manners? The name is Levy. Levy Dryden. Levy. Did Duncan ever mention me? Levy of the coins? Levy the trader? I don't think so. Duncan never mentioned you. Really? He never told you of old Levy? We've known each other for years. But here I am carrying on while you have a blight to stop. Don't want to waste your time. But you see, Duncan promised that together we'd look into something important for the Wardens. And for me. But poor Duncan's. Well, no more. A tragedy it is, at that. But I know he would want his work carried on. His pledge fulfilled. Well, maybe if we had more time together, he would have mentioned you. I'm sorry. How did you know Duncan? It's a bit of a tale, that is. But I'm the one who brought the Grey Wardens back to Ferelden. Well, I was one of the did ones. You? There were a lot of us. Make us breath. I'm a bit nervous. Honored to be here, really. Huh. What promise did Duncan make to you? My family... Well, pass a bit checkered to see. Nobles look at us with disdain. My great-great-grandmother, Sophia Dryden, was the last warden commander of Ferelden back when the wardens were known as freeloaders. So King Olin banished the wardens, and he took House Dryden's land and titles. So you want your house back, huh? What happened next? Hard to say. After King Arlen died, there was a civil war, loads worse than this one, and our family was on the run, hunted by enemies, with nary a friend in the world. But Dryden's are tough. We rebuilt, became merchants, and we never lost our pride. Fair enough. I'm surprised you kept your name. I am not quite, but I want to hear his reasoning. Our family's only crime was guarding the kingdom against the Blight. We're not ashamed of that. What favor did you ask of Duncan? I asked for the truth. My family reveres Sophia Dryden. We know she died at the old Grey Warden base, Soldier's Peak. We want evidence to clear her name. It won't restore our land or our titles, but it'll restore our honor. Okay. I've never even heard of Soldier's Peak. Well, no one's been to Soldier's Peak since Ireland's days. At least none that's come back. I spent years mapping the maze of tunnels to the peak, and I found the way a few years back. So I went to Duncan, I did, and I said that he could reclaim the old base and my family could have its honor. Interesting. How will reclaiming the peak help the Wardens? Soldier's Peak has strategic and symbolic importance. Duncan said that it would be worth it right there. 
He also hoped to recover lost warden history and perhaps a few old relics. No one knows what's up there now. Fair enough. What do you need from me? I can pick my way through the tunnels at the base of Soldier's Peak, but the place... Well, they say it's haunted, and it'll be dangerous for certain. Will you think on it, at least? Your family's faith will be rewarded. I will help you. I will answer that. I don't know much about his family, but I appreciate him wanting to clear Sophia's name. A thousand blessings upon you, Warden. I'll mark down the location on your map. When you arrive, we'll pick our way through the tunnels together. So you're not a merchant after all. Well, not for me anyway. Sophia Dryden, let's read about her. Okay, I see. So after reading the history, uh, there is a lot more to Sophia than what he just said. Granted, our conversation was pretty brief, but she started the rebellion against the king, and that was mainly the reason why they were hunted down. So it's interesting to learn about what actually became of her, or I guess what kind of person she actually was, regardless of what the... I guess the histories are telling. Ah! Arlesa Sophia Dryden was the young Arlen's rival for the throne of Ferelden. That explains a lot. Dryden was a strong and charismatic leader with much support from the Bannorn. When Arlen finally won the crown, Dryden refused to relent. She pushed her claim, was caught, and accused of treason. Her sympathizers continued to support her, however. In order to appease them, Dryden was spared execution and forced to join the Grey Wardens instead. Ah. Okay. Well, I don't necessarily condone that kind of behavior unless Arland won the crown by um, questionable means, which could be the case. Dryden survived the joining and dazzled the Grey Wardens at Soldier's Peak with her leadership skills and charm. She eventually rose through the ranks and became the Warden Commander of Ferelden. Before Commander Dryden, the Grey Wardens were seen as a relic of an older time and an unnecessary drain on the nobles' coffers. Dryden, though, with her political connections, reinvigorated the Wardens and rapidly increased their numbers. In the meantime, King Arland proved himself a devious king, willing to go to brutal length to silence his opponents. Arland's reign of terror grew worse with each passing year, and some of the bands approached Commander Dryden in desperation, begging her to intercede. She agreed, and thus was the rebellion against King Arland born. Arland learned of the rebellion and took steps to end it. He publicly suspended all tithings to the Grey Wardens and declared that they were no longer welcome in Ferelden. Some of the Wardens, mindful that they were supposed to remain politically neutral, felt disgraced by Dryden's involvement in Ferelden politics and left her side even as the King's forces lay siege to Soldier's Peak. The siege took months and ended with the death of Sophia Dryden. Okay. That explains a whole lot. Okay. Yeah, I'd be interested to learn how it all went down from the Soldier Speak perspective, for sure. Maleficarum, Maleficarum? Regrets. I won't go back. Let them hunt and dread finding me. But you, Melis, should not live this life. It would please me if you found a life in the Circle Tower. I left a few things there, mostly stolen from the enchanters. Sell them to fund a new path. The cash is in the study area, middle alcove. Goodbye. Study area, middle alcove of the circle tower. I need to somehow remember that. I cannot possibly imagine that I would, but maybe I can somehow drill it into my memory to check the all of the quest-related codices when I get to the Circle Tower? I doubt it. Maybe I can build a habit just to check them out <laughs> every once in a while, regardless. All right, well, let us talk to our companions. Like Sten, how are you doing, guy? 
my Why guy? are we stopping? Why are we stopping? I'm so sorry. We need to sleep. We're working together. I should. I think I should get to know you. There are dark spawn to be fought. Is this delay needful? Yes. I need to know I can trust you. <laughs> I need to know if I can trust you at my back. I am Kunari. I have given my word to aid you. We are not people of idle promises. I've never seen a Kunari before. Tell me about your people. No. Uh... Okay. Please? People are not simple. They cannot be summarized for easy reference in the manner of the elves are a lithe, pointy-eared people who excel at poverty. Oh. Oh, that's low. Okay. Let's kill him with kindness. Are you all right? You were in that cage for weeks. You are concerned. No need. I am fit enough to fight. <laughs> Not quite what I meant. You said you were in the army. I am. You are? Not were. You are. Okay. What made you decide to become a soldier? Decide. I am a Sten of the Beresad. I did not choose to be who I am any more than you did. A Sten? Is that a title? I thought it was his name. Why would the Kunari send soldiers here? The Antam are the eyes, hands, and mouth of the Kunari. We are how my people know the world. That does not necessarily answer the questions. Wait, Antam, does that mean soldiers then? You didn't really answer my question. No, I didn't. I kind of like this guy. He's quite unique. <laughs> are you always this stubborn? Yes. There is no point to this. We are keeping the darkspawn waiting. <laughs> okay. Why did you offer to help me? For the moment, you are the enemy of my enemy. For the moment. Yes. I am Kunari. As long as you do not make yourself my enemy, I will aid you. I can promise nothing else. We should get moving. As you wish. How do I give you a gift? Not that you deserve one currently. <laughs> You're being quite a dick to me. Alright. I did get something for him, didn't I? A tribal necklace? No. Oh, okay. I guess he doesn't really want this one. I think this is what I meant for him. Golden Scythe. This battlefield spirit maintains a chill, even in direct sunlight, which appears to absorb. Optimal serving... No, I'm not talking to him right now. What am I... What am I doing? Alright. Um... Kanari Prayers... Of the Dead... How do I gift something to someone? Stan approves? I didn't even notice that. Alright, you know what? Um, I'm going to dig through Codex and see if there's anything that says about how to gift a thing to a person. <laughs> Give me one second, okay? Alright, that didn't help. Um, maybe I can only give gifts when they are actually in my party. I guess I'll have to find out, or test it out once we are out of the camp. Well... We talked to... Sten, we talked to the dog. Let's go talk to Morrigan. She's the farthest one away. For now. What do you wish of me? I don't know if we are at a level to discuss something personal yet. Uh, I'd like to ask you something. If you must. How did you become a shape changer? Ooh, that's a good one. I was not born such. Tis a skill of Flemeth's, taught over many years in the wilds. The chastened have tales of we witches, saying that we assume the forms of creatures to watch them from hiding. When a child is alone and separate from his tribe, that is when we strike. Dragging the young boy, kicking and screaming to our lair to be devoured. A most amusing legend. Okay, I'm guessing you don't do that. <laughs> Your mother has been doing this for a long time, then. 
Changing her form, certainly. Devouring lost children, I cannot say. She has not done it in my experience, though in truth my lifespan is but a fraction of her own. Why do you ask? Is there something specific you wish to know? I wouldn't mind learning, to be honest. I've never heard of magic like this before. Now, can anyone become a shape changer? Maybe she can teach me. Anyone with sufficient will. But the act of transformation is a magical one. Tis a spell and thus requires a mage's talents. Indeed, you could learn the spells required if I cared to teach you. Would you care? I've never heard of magic like that before. No? Tis not unheard of in the remote corners of the world. There are traditions of magic outside of the Circle of Magi, despite what those mages would have you believe. Some of these traditions are old, indeed, passed down as carefully guarded lore from one generation to the next. The zealots of the Chantry would uproot all such practitioners if they could. But as luck have it, some still exist. My mother is such a one. That's good. Such traditions need to be preserved. I'm shocked that you think so. Being a mage of the Circle as you were. But perhaps you felt a little like a caged bird as well caught within that dark tower a little bit i also did happen to uh help a blood mage escape because i didn't really like the regime yes very much so i thought so do you spend a lot of time as an animal there were nights when the wilds called to me it is true you look upon the world around you and you think you know it well i have smelled it as a wolf listened as a cat proud shadows that you never dreamed existed but my life is as a human i am under no illusions to the contrary that is actually really cool okay so she kind of answered the second questions already because it's the animal form that she can take what do other animals think of you when you've changed Ooh, i like that they do not shy away from me to their senses, I believe I seem like any other of their species. As to what they think, I truly cannot say. Just as I am still human, no matter my form, they are still animals. Thus, they cannot speak, even were I to ask. Okay. Can you change into other human forms as well? The form of an animal is different from my own. One may study the creature, learn to move as it does, think as it does. In time, this allows one to become as it is. I gain nothing by studying another human. I already am the same as they are. I learn nothing. So the answer is no, my human form is the only one I possess. That is a lot more elaborate answer than I expected from that question, to be honest. That is not at all all I wanted to ask. I wanted her to teach me. Indeed. Have you an opinion on my abilities, then? Am I an unnatural abomination to be put to the torch? What? Excuse me, no. I think your abilities sound quite useful. A most practical opinion. Far more so than any man I have spoken to. But enough of such talk. Let us proceed lest the dust gather on us. Can you not teach me? What do you wish of me? I wish you could. Let's try again. If you must. Can you teach others to become shape changers? Oh, there it is. Nope. Possibly, if I had the desire to. I do not. God damn it. I should have known you'd be a selfish bitch. Oh my god. Ah, uh, and why not? I was told to accompany you and to help you, and that I shall. This may extend to the teaching of my mother's skills in time. For now, I simply do not know you well enough. I promise nothing. Ah, she doesn't like me enough. Okay, that's fair. That's fair enough. We can talk about it again. Although, what she did have more me? options to talk about. If you must. Did you grow up in the Kolkari? Wilds, have you ever been hunted by the Chantry? We already talked about this. Alright, Morrigan. Thank you, my lady. Let's go see what others have to say. 
Leliana. How are you doing, lady? Yes. I'd like to talk. Well, here I am. What would someone like you be doing in Lothring Chantry? What is meant by someone like me? It's a little rude, isn't it? <laughs> they don't teach you how to fight in the cloister, do they? Well, she already said that she wasn't born in the Chantry. Um, let's flirt. You know, a beautiful, charming woman like yourself. And there were no beautiful, charming women in the cloisters, you think? <laughs> you would be wrong. There were many lovely young initiates in the Lothering Cloister. All of them chaste and virtuous. <laughs> it added to their mystique. Because then, there were forbidden. And forbidden fruit is the sweeter, no? Oh, my god, lady. All right. What about your fruit? Ugh. That's what they say? That's what they say. I don't know if I'm ready to flirt that overtly. <laughs> that That's embarrassing. <laughs> um, that's what they say. I did not take those vows that the initiates took. Vows of poverty, chastity, among others. The Chantry provides succor and safe harbor to all who seek it. I chose to stay and become affirmed. Okay, affirmed. We affirm our belief in the Maker, in Andraste and the Chant, but other than that, there are no vows taken. Okay, and why were you seeking safe harbor? The Chantry does not pride, and you should. I desired time apart from the world. I was a traveling minstrel in Orle. Tales and songs were my life. I performed, and they rewarded me with applause and coin. And my skill in battle? Well, you pick up different skills when you travel, yes? Yes, of course. Um, let's move on. It makes sense that she's a bard. I mean, I already knew that she's a bard, but... Yes? I'd like to talk. Well, here I am. You are a traveling minstrel. Do you have tales to share? Of course I do. I love stories far too much to keep them to myself. Everyone should be able to benefit from them, I think. Do you know... No. Know any stories from Orle? Of course. Orlesians enjoy telling Orlesians. stories. I shall tell you my favorite tale of Aveline, the Knight of Orle. Do it. A long time ago, a girl child was born to a farmer. He had hoped for a son, not a daughter, and so he told his wife to abandon the child in the woods. Before the cold could claim her, the baby was found by a tribe of Dalish elves who took pity on the poor mewling thing and raised her as their own. Aveline, for that is what they called her, grew strong and quick and clever under the guidance of the elves. She learned to wield the sword as well as any man, could kill a deer with an arrow at hundred paces, and was as graceful on the back of a horse as she was on foot. Please continue. Aveline's Dalish guardians saw that she could easily best any Olesian chevalier in battle, and wanted to show the cruel humans the child they had left to die. They bestowed upon her a fine horse and armor, and sent her to prove herself to her people in the Grand Tourney. Now in those days, no woman was allowed to take up arms, let alone compete in the Grand Tourney, but Aveline kept her helmet on and was not discovered. Go on. Aveline won many events and gained the approval of the adoring crowd. Eventually, she came face to face with the knight Kaleva in the Grand Melee. Aveline had already bested him in the joust, and Kaleva was determined not to lose a second time. Out of desperation to regain his honor, Kaleva tripped Aveline and tossed her to the ground, ripping off her helmet as he did so. Silence fell upon the arena as Aveline was revealed. Kaleva declared the previous competitions invalid. A woman had taken part, and this was not allowed. But the crowd cheered for Aveline. Kaleva was furious, for he had lost to a woman and was now being shamed. Blinded by his rage, he forced Aveline to her knees. Know your place, woman, cried he, and slit her throat. Oh my god, this is not the turn that I expected. That's terrible. The son of the king, 
Prince Freyan was present. He recognized Aveline's skill and bravery and began to see the injustice done to the women in his land. When he was made king, he rewrote the laws of Ole so that women could also become chevalier. He honored Aveline and knighted her after her death. And to this day, any female who is knighted reveres Aveline the Brave, for she is the patron of all women chevalier. That's honorable. Doesn't really bring her back to life, though. Sadly. Do you know any Ferelden legends? I know one. Told to me by my mother a long time ago. It always chilled me to the bone. Maybe you have heard of Flemeth? Oh, funny you should say that. Should we tell her? I- okay. Let's not show all of our cards. Ferelden mothers scare their daughters with talk of Flemeth. They say that if you're bad, Flemeth will spirit you away and bind you to her forever. They also say that Flemeth mourns her lost beauty and will steal yours through your looking glass if she catches you. Interesting. Flemeth was once beautiful. We know this, but Flemeth's still. beauty was known throughout the land. She had hair like unto a moonless night, skin as pale as winter's first snow and eyes as beautiful and perilous as the sea. When she came of age, she came to the attention of the Lord of Hyeva, Conobar, and he took her for his wife. Conobar soon learned that his young bride had the gift of magic. He kept this a secret, for he feared that she would be taken from him. Flemeth stayed with Conobar for some years, and with his blessing, she practiced her art. And then one day, a young poet named Osen came to the castle. Flemeth was captivated by Osen's voice, and he by her beauty, and they fell in love. Interesting. So now it's two, I guess, votes for Flemeth running away with Osen versus what Morrigan said, that she was married to Osen already. I don't know which to believe. What happened then? Flemeth longed to be with her true love, and she and Osen fled from Conobar's lands, seeking refuge in the Kokari wilds with the Chasin tribes. They lived there happily for many a year, till the day Flemeth received news that Conobar was dying and longed to see her face one last time. Flemeth's heart swelled with pity for the man who once was her husband, and begged Osen to return to Conobar's side with her. But when Flemeth and Osen entered Hyeva, they were captured by Conobar's men, and Osen was slain in front of Flemeth's eyes. Flemeth was imprisoned in the highest tower of the castle, there to await Conobar's judgment on her. Distraught at the loss of her love, Flemeth plotted revenge against her husband. She summoned a fey demon, intending for it to wreak vengeance on Conobar. But a spell went awry. The demon possessed Flemeth. Turning her into an abomination, the halls of the castle run red with blood as Flemeth slaughtered Conobar and all his men. The last of Flemeth's humanity melted away, and at dawn, she stole back to the wilds to plot and scheme for a hundred years. They say she took to her side many chastened men, and with their help, begat her daughter witches, who even now prowl the dark places of the Kokari wilds. One of them is... Right over there. <laughs> okay, uh, tell me about Darkspawn. Chantry Law says it is man's pride that created the Darkspawn. In ages past, the mages of the Tevinder Imperium ruled much of the world we know. In their pride, they thought their magics invincible and imagined that they were greater than the Maker himself. So thinking, they invaded his golden city planning to take it for themselves and depose their own creator. But they were impure and full of sin. And it is with the sin that they tainted the golden city, corrupting it forever. The Maker cursed them and cast them from his sight. Wherever they went, they spread the taint of their sin. Any land that was touched by the taint became blighted and would suffer no life. Instead, the darkspawn arose to torment us and remind us of our hubris. Okay. There was another story I wanted Which to one? hear. 
Do you know anything about the Dalish? What do you know about Andraste? I thought of it just now, but it slipped my mind. Um, she did tell a story about the Dalish, kinda. What about Andraste? Andraste was the Maker's chosen. The Maker had long since abandoned the world when the sound of her singing turned his ear. Beauty, grace and wisdom enraptured him and he offered to take her from this flawed world to become his divine bride. But Andraste had an earthly husband and would not forsake him. Instead, she beseeched the Maker to return to his people once more. So earnest was her plea that the Maker was moved and promised that he would create a paradise on earth if all abandoned their false gods and turned once more to him. And this is why Andraste began her exalted march on the idolaters of the Tevinter Imperium. The Maker granted her his powers with which to smite her enemies. Andraste brought the Imperium to its knees, and her victories converted many to the worship of the Maker. Yeah. How did Andraste die? Alas, it was the frailties of men that betrayed and killed Andraste. Her earthly husband, Mafarath, a chieftain of the Alamari tribes himself, grew jealous as his wife's popularity and influence overshadowed his own. She was also revered as the Maker's betrothed, and Mafarath began to see their own bond waning in significance as Andraste became ever more devoted to the Maker. Out of envy and spite, Mafarath made a pact with the Archon Hesarian of Tevinta, allowing his beloved Andraste to be ambushed and captured. Andraste was burned at the stake in Minrathus, the capital of Tevinta. But Tevinta has a chantry, doesn't it? The Tevinta chantry claims that in Andraste's last moments, Hesarian's heart softened, and he heard the voice of the Maker telling him to end her suffering. He plunged his sword into her heart and as her blood washed over his hands, he became one of the faithful. Dissenters said that the Archon only converted because he could not stem the tide of Andraste's cult, and was forced to do so to stay in power. We will never know for sure. Interesting. Okay. Let's just move on. Alright. Um, Alistar, what about you, sir? What do you need? I'd like to ask you something. Ask away. You are a bit short with me, aren't you? Um... You said you were raised by the Chantry? Oh, did I say that? I meant that dogs raised me. Giant slobbering dogs from the Anderfells. A whole pack of them, in fact. <laughs> Morgan might have something to say about that. Really? That must have been tough for them. Well, they were flying dogs, you see. Surprisingly strict parents, too, and devout Andrastians to boot. Hmm. And these dogs sold you to the Chantry? That is what they say about Anders. I'm, I'm mystified about this option. That, and that they make a great deal of cheese. Funny, but the dogs never mention cheese. As a matter of fact, if you said cheese around them, they'd start growling. Isn't that odd? Or did I dream all of that? Funny the dreams you'll have when you sleep on the cold, hard ground, isn't it? <laughs> Are you having strange dreams? Oh god! Uh... Let's embarrass the guy. Let's see how badly it's going to turn out for us. Only ones where we're making mad love in my tent. <laughs> I, uh, oh, I, I think I completely lost my chain of thought. Oh, there it is. Let's see, how do I explain this? I'm a bastard, and before you make any smart comments, I mean the fatherless kind. My mother was a serving girl in Redcliffe Castle who died when I was very young. Arleman wasn't my father, but he took me in anyhow and put a roof over my head. He was good to me, and he didn't have to be. I respect the man, and I don't blame him anymore for sending me off to the Chantry once I was old enough. I did not realize that embarrassing him would make him turn serious. I kind of embarrassed myself there too. <laughs> not gonna lie. Why did you s send you off to the Chantry? No, wait. Is this too personal of a question about his father? I feel like it might be. Let's- okay, let's do with- why did he send you off to the Chantry? Arleman eventually married a young woman from Orlais. 
which caused all sorts of problems between him and the king because it was so soon after the war. But he loved her. Anyhow, then you, Arlesa, resented the rumors which pegged me as his bastard. They weren't true, but of course they existed. The Isle didn't care, but she did. So off I was packed to the nearest monastery at age ten. Just as well. The Arlesa made sure the castle wasn't a home to me by that point. She despised me. That's unfortunate. Even when the guy wasn't your father, she is a stereotypical stepmother. What an awful thing to do to a child. Maybe. She felt threatened by my presence, I can see that now. I can't say I blame her. She wondered if the rumors were true herself, I bet. I remember I had an amulet with Andraste's holy symbol on it. The only thing I had of my mother's. I was so furious at being sent away, I tore it off and threw it at the wall and it shattered. Stupid, stupid thing to do. The Isle came by the monastery a few times to see how I was, but I was stubborn. I hated it there, and blamed him for everything. And eventually, he just stopped coming. You are young. And raised by dogs. Or I may as well have been, the way I acted. <laughs> yeah, but maybe all young bastards act like that. I don't know. All I know is that the Arl is a good man, and well-loved by the people. He also was King Kaelin's uncle, so he has a personal motivation to see Loghain pay for what he did. Anyway, that's really all there is to the story. That's fair. What do you need? Ask away. Um, why have you remained a Templar if you hate the Chantry? Have you seen the uniform? It's not only <laughs> stylish, but well made. I'm a sucker for good tailoring. Of course you are. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen you wearing it. <laughs> I keep it hidden under my pillow. Sometimes I'll take it out just so I can hug it fondly and remember the good old days. <laughs> Brings a tear to the eyes, you know. <laughs> so this is where you deflect questions with humor, right? I'd use my shield if I could. But I think you might actually spot me hiding behind it. You don't really want to know about my being a Templar, do you? It's really quite boring. You know, I think you don't have to tell me. I was just curious would be the correct or the most appropriate question if I was talking to a regular human. But I think I really want to know. Poke, poke, poke. Tell me everything about your life, Alistair. All right. If you insist, it's not like we have anything better to do, right? The truth of the matter is that I did hate going to the monastery. The initiates from poor families thought I put on airs, while the noble ones called me a bastard and ignored me. I felt like Al Eamon had cast me off unwanted, and I was determined to be bitter. But I took some solace in the training itself, I guess. I was actually quite good at it. I guess he didn't like that answer. Or that question depending on how you look at it. I think I understand. Using the abilities I have came after years of education and discipline that was difficult to achieve, if rewarding. The sword training and religious doctrine all came later. I never really felt at home anywhere, though, until I joined the Grey Wardens. And Duncan felt my Templar abilities might be useful for when we encountered Darkspawn magic, so I kept it up. What about you? Do you have anywhere you consider home? Not anymore, no. We won't always be traveling like this, you know. Once the war is over, once the blight is... Well, a time will come when we'll have to think about having a real home again. Though that seems like a far ways off. And I suppose the Grey Wardens are gone for good. Either way. We can continue. They can be rebuilt. I suppose you're right. We can create new Grey Wardens, but we'll never get back those we lost. No. I wonder if it would ever feel the same. Anyhow, now I've sidetracked us. We'd better get back to what we're supposed to be doing right now. Okay. All right. I guess... Do we leave now? I suppose so?
On that note... So neutral plus 21 with you. Plus 16 neutral. Plus 10. Plus 2, okay. And no relationship status <laughs> with the dog, thank god. Alright, well let's head out. See where we go. Do I need to pick? I guess I do. Indeed. Indeed. Yes. Okay, accept. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, Brazilian outskirts. The edge of the Brazilian forest, the dangers of which are well recorded in local legends. Is this where the Dalish are? Denerim, Soldier Speak, Party Camp, okay. <laughs> and Lauren's Lands, Lake, Allen Hod Dogs, Redcliffe Village, Soldier's Pass, Frostback Mountains. Um, I think I want to go to the Dalish. I think. I am not sure. I'm assuming that's where the Dalish are. But then again, we have the the Arl dying. I am torn between being really interested in Alistar's backstory and being interested in the elves in general. Because those are the free elves, right? They are, well, I guess they could be called the rebellious elves because they are not, you know, poor in cities. Or oppressed. So I don't know. Let's head. <laughs> the funny part is about this discussion is that I don't even know if this is where I'm going to end up. So let's head over. Let's pull the plug. A road of blood. That's quite poetic. Hold, outsider. You may be of my kind, but you are not Dalish. Why are you here? I got it. I had no idea there were any Dalish here. No, I did, actually. I have business with your leader, actually. And what business is that? I will tell that to the Keeper and no one else. Seeing as you are obviously no simple trespasser, I will leave it to the Keeper to decide the importance of your business. In the camp, I suggest you keep your hands to yourself, and remember that our arrows are still trained on you. Follow me. Fine. Hmm. I see we have guests. Doggy, be nice. And a hound amongst them. As if we haven't had enough problems with such creatures. Who are these strangers, Nithra? I have precious little patience and less time to spend on outsiders today. I understand, but this one claims to have important business with our people. I see. Tell me, stranger, what business could you possibly have with us? We have our own issues we must deal with, as you can see. Right. I come representing the Grey Wardens. You might have simply said so to begin with. Masirinus, Mithra. You may return to your post. Manuvinen, Keeper. Now, allow me to introduce myself. I am Zaprian, the Keeper of this clan. Its guide and preserver of our ancient lore. And you are? Uh, pleasure to meet you. If you came to bring news of the Blight in the South, it is not needed. I had already sensed its corruption. I would have taken the clan north by now, had we the ability to move. Sadly, as you can see, we do not. Yes, it seems like you've had your own troubles. What are the odds? I imagine you are here regarding the treaty we signed centuries ago. Unfortunately, we may not be able to live up to the promise we made. This will require some explanation. Please, follow me. Okay. 
Oh no. The clan came to the Brazilian forest one month ago, as is our custom when we enter this part of Ferelden. We are always wary of the dangers in the forest, but we did not expect the werewolves would be lying in wait for us. They ambushed us, and though we drove the beasts back, much damage was done. Many of our warriors lie dying as we speak, even with all our magic and healing skill. We will eventually be forced to slay our brethren to prevent them from becoming beasts. The Blight's evil must be stopped. But we are in no position to uphold our obligations. I am truly sorry. Interesting. I am curious why my dog decided to growl at him. Why did these beasts attack you? They are savage and unrelenting. They need no reason to attack anyone. What is curious, however, is the ambush. We expect werewolves to be no more cunning than a rabid wolf. The ambush suggests a level of intelligence we've never seen before. I always thought werewolves are supposed to be intelligent. They are, you know, turning into wolves from humans, aren't they? Unless this world has totally different werewolves. Maybe they aren't as unintelligent as you think. I doubt that. The very curse that is in their blood fills them with an unreasoning rage that precludes any true thought. Hmm. Is there no way to help your men? The affliction is a curse that runs rampant in their blood, bringing great agony and then ultimately either death or a transformation into something monstrous. The only thing that could help them must come from the source of the curse itself. And that... That would be no trivial task to retrieve. I sense a quest. You're talking about a werewolf. This isn't like with vampires, is it? When you kill the sire, everyone else is normal? No, but it is the one who made these werewolves come to be. Okay. Within the Brazilian forest dwells a great wolf. We call him Witherfang. It was within him that the curse originated, and through his blood that it has been spread. If he is killed and his heart brought to me, perhaps I could destroy the curse. But this task has proven too dangerous for us. I sent some hunters into the forest a week ago, but they have not returned. I cannot risk any more of my clan. Sir? Are you a werewolf yourself? You said you could perhaps destroy the curse? There is no guarantee that this will work, as I suspect. But it's the only hope we have left. Hmm. Have you considered seeking outside help? From whom? The Children of the Stone? The Shemlin? Do you truly think they have time to spare for us? You could try. If I help you, what will you give me? We would assist with the Blight, of course. And you would have our gratitude. I'll find this wither thing for you. I must warn you that more than werewolves lurk in the Brazilian forest. It has a history full of carnage and murder, you see. Where there is so much death, the veil separating the spirit realm from our own becomes thin, allowing spirits to possess things, living or dead. But if you can indeed help, then I wish you luck. I have some questions for you. Make them quick, if you please. I have much to do here. My apprentice Lanaya or Seirel, the clan's storyteller, could provide you with answers just as easily. Tell me more about this curse this hunters suffer from. There is not much to say. It stemmed originally from Witherfang, but now any werewolf may infect someone with it. How did it start? That is a long tale I do not have time to tell. Ask Seirel about it if you wish. Okay. How do you know if you have been infected by the curse? You will know within a matter of days. You will begin to sweat and vomit, and most tellingly, your temper will become wild and uncontrollable. If that happens to you, you should seek out Witherfang even more swiftly. Your mission at that point will be rather... personal. Okay, you're not a werewolf. So if a werewolf bites me, then I will become infected. It is possible, but not guaranteed. The only way to protect against the curse is not to be bitten. Can we not get hit by werewolves, then? That will be difficult. So did all werewolves everywhere stem from Witherfang? No. 
The ones from this forest, however, do. Okay. Go on then. How do I find Witherfang? Do you have any advice? Watch for the white wolves. They are his eyes and ears in the forest. There is some definite intelligence going on there that you are disregarding, sir. I should go. I must return to caring for my people. Creator's speed on your way. Okay. Ha! Alrighty then. Elf nurse. I need to find a storyteller. Arthas? Arthas? Like, like the World of Warcraft Arthas? Uh, are they going to get pissed if I do this? As you desire. I am actually not going to take it. Oh, oh, that reminds me. Um, inventory. Okay. Liliana. Would you... What would you like? Can I offer you a gift? Bronze symbol of Andraste. You gotta like that. I... That's a wonderful thought. She liked it! What to say. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Neutral. Nice. Alright, you know what? I'm gonna save before this. Just in case I mess it up, because that's been known to happen. But let's go to Morrigan. I want to see if she would like this. I am grateful. It is thoughtful indeed. <gasps> 50? 50? I did not expect that. Did Alistair ha hate it? Holy shit. 66. Okay. Um, carved statue. I could get used to this, you know. 10. Hmm, I see. Oh, it looks like you would like that too. I could get used to this, you know. Wait a second. Alistair can play with this puppet and it's accompanying toy horse. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. That's kind of funny. Can I give one to the dog? I saw it. I got a bone for the dog. Did I not? Or maybe I can't give it to him because he's not in my party. Or not dog bone, stick. Let's see. What? What? What is happening? Alistair is getting all sorts of stuff? Uh, I need answers. Huh! Minor constitution. Inspired by your leadership, this party member has gained plus one bonus to constitution. Plus four bonus to constitution? How did that happen? That's awesome! Moderate magic. That's so cool. Oh, Liliana, I'm so sorry. I wish I had more gifts for you. That is awesome. <laughs> okay. I greet you, stranger. It is good to see another elf, even if you are not one of the wandering clans. I trust my people have not been too harsh in their treatment of you. Well, they've been fine. Actually, they, everyone has been quite accommodating. We welcome our brethren, even if they have forgotten the old ways. That is our charge, after all. To keep the old lore alive until we can bring it back for all. I understand you will search for the wolves in the Brazilian forest. I would join you, but Zathrian has forbidden me. World travels around, doesn't it? Forbidden you? We are banned from entering the forest now. I have more cause than most, but I will not disobey my keeper. Are you missing someone? Why do you want to enter the forest? I suppose there's no harm in telling a fellow elf, but surely you have greater concerns than any problem of mine, no? I... want to gather all information I possibly can. I'd like to hear about well, it. Well, perhaps you could help me with it. 
I would certainly appreciate anything you could do. My wife Denyla and I both fought the werewolves in the ambush. She was injured so gravely, the curse spread rapidly in her. Zathrian fought hard to ease her pain, but there was little he could do. And though he says that Denyla is dead, he will not let me see her. Her body. I am beginning to believe she became a werewolf. And that it is being kept from me so I do not go chasing after her. If I could just know if Denyla is alive or what happened to her, then I could be at peace. Can they turn back from werewolves if we get rid of this wither thing? Because that would be kind of nice. I'm sorry, this is terrible. Masiranas, thank you. The Keeper means well, but I must discover the truth for myself. If you were in the forest, perhaps you might come across her, alive or dead. Any news would be better than none. And in return, I would be happy to gift you an amulet made by our craftsmen. It may fetch you some coin in the human lands. That's fair. I'll see what I can do. Since we seem to be heading into the forest anyhow, that does seem to be the right thing to do. You are most kind. I should go. Please, should you come across my wife, return and tell me. Okay. So, we are gathering quests and information. Mithra is over there. Dalish Apprentice. Lanaya. Okay. We've heard your name before. I'm Darren Atishan, Grey Warden. My name is Lanaya. I am Zaprian's first, what you might call an apprentice, perhaps. I've been studying under the Keeper all my life. I am a bit curious of the outside world. Do you mind if I ask you a question or two? Please, if you like, go ahead. I hear the human cities are very large. Thousands upon thousands of souls all packed together in their houses. Is that true? I wouldn't know, actually. I've been in the tower. <laughs> yes, some are larger than the eye can see. How very loud that must be with everyone talking all at once. I try to imagine those of our people living in such a place, surrounded by walls of stone and indifference. It is a difficult thought. That's fair. They are used to it, just as the humans are. Being accustomed to pain and suffering does not make it any less tragic. It is said that one day we will have a land of our own. We Dalish gather the ancient wisdom in preparation for this. When that day comes, all elves, even those who have forgotten, will reclaim their former glory. I have one more question, though I'm not sure you can answer it. Do the humans ever regret what they did to us? I think some of them do. Not all humans are the same. And yet, even if some regret, they do nothing. A poet once wrote of them before the fall of the Dales. Like dragons they fly, glory upon wings. Like dragons, they savage, fearsome, pretty things. But you don't need me to quote poetry to you. Forgive me. Perhaps you have some questions of your own. Perhaps I do. What can you tell me about Zathrian? Nothing that you could not ask Zathrian himself. He is the keeper of this clan and has been for a very long time. He is also a very good man who has lost much. The Dalish are everything to him, and he would do anything to protect them. Lost much? What has he lost? He... lost his family. A very long time ago. I don't know the story, but I understand the circumstances were horrific. What does a Keeper do, exactly? A Keeper is, first and foremost, the leader of the clan. He decides where we go and when we shall move. He's also responsible for knowing the clan's ancient lore and passing it on to the others in the clan. Without a Keeper, the clan's knowledge is lost forever. So the clan protects him like no other. So this is what you are learning. Why are the Dalish so hostile? Well, I think I know the answer to that. They have reason. Since the days of Arlathan, my people have been either subjugated or homeless. Yeah. What is this Arlathan you mentioned? It was our ancestral home long ago when the humans first came to these lands. We were free then and immortal. We did not know how to deal with the humans and in the end, they turned their power against us and destroyed our Lathan. Our ancestors were enslaved and our culture lost forever. Elves were immortal then? They died, but not of an aged body as other races do. 
not until the humans came. According to the legends, association with humans caused us to quicken. Our blood sped, and we began to age. So we avoided them naturally. And then we were enslaved by them for a thousand years. And in so doing, we all were quickened permanently and our immortality destroyed. Or so the old tales say. Interesting. Does our Lathan still exist? Not to my knowledge. According to the old tales, the human mages sank our Lathan into the ground, crushing it beneath the rock. Okay. But the elves were eventually freed, right? Somewhat. Yes. After a millennium of slavery, our people were freed by Andraste. The human's prophet who spawned the Chantry. But you don't worship the Maker? I can't imagine. We worship the Creators, as we always have. We give thanks to Andraste for her part in our freedom, but we do not worship her, or her god. I can see why you resent humans, then. Shemlin, we call them. Quick children. Oh! I suppose it takes a certain arrogance to look upon another people as children, no? Perhaps we should be more heedful of our own role in Arlathan's loss. Even so, it was a bitter lesson to learn. One we are not grateful for. That makes sense. With what, um, the Keeper said. Is there no way to get on your clan's good side? It requires an individual to prove he is not the outsider we have come to expect. Your own task to help our clan is certainly a step in the right direction. Your homeland was called the Dales, I thought. That was our second homeland. Our first was the great city of Arlathan. The Dales came when they were freed from enslavement. Elves everywhere journeyed hundreds and thousands of miles to the Dales, eager to start their lives anew. They called it the Long Walk. They reached the Dales and made it their own. And one day it was taken from us too, and you wonder why we are hostile. Am I seeing some sort of a biblical parallel here? Huh. Let me know if you guys see it as well. Um, I want to ask something else. Certainly. Tell me about yourself. I'm hardly anyone special, I assure you. If I seem different from the rest of my clan, it's only because I was born amongst humans. Mm -hmm. I came to the Dalish at a very young age, but I've always retained my curiosity about the world I came from. So you must have seen those giant houses then. No? How did you come to the Dalish if you were so young? My parents were servants to a human merchant whose caravan plied the southern routes. One day, bandits killed him, and my parents both. I was the only survivor, just a young girl, and the bandits took me. I was their... servant for several years. Uh, I can't imagine what that was like. I'm sorry. It must have been horrible. It was. The long years of reflection have allowed me to come to terms with it, to put them in perspective. I can only imagine what would have happened had the clan not saved me from them. I owe them my life for that, and more. You said the Dalish rescued you from the bandits? The bandits killed a scout when the clan passed near their camp. When the clan discovered him, Zathrian came looking for his killers. He followed their tracks for almost a month, and when he finally caught up to us, he fell on the bandits like a terror. No one could stop him. I sat there, and I watched him attack them in a blur, and I reveled in every blow. And he saw me. The fury in his eyes turned to pity. He took me back to the clan, and I've been here ever since. That's very nice. Didn't you have family you could have returned to? No, I don't believe so. I should go. As you wish. Darth Shiro. Okay. Now, let's see. I can open this. I don't know. I never know if they were going to be. And so I shall. Please leave that be. If you have need of equipment, I am sure Master Verathorn can help you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Masirinus. I should have known. Okay, so Verathorn. How do they move these things through the forest? Do the trees just get out of their way or what? <laughs> Elf woman... Gaina? What is this? Oh my god, this place is huge! I am slightly overwhelmed. 
And on that note, I think I am going to leave this here. Um, I am quite curious about this predicament that they find themselves in. I thought it was a little suspicious that my dog decided to growl at the keeper guy. In the conversation with him, it didn't seem like there was anything suspicious about him, but you know, animals can ten tend to sense stuff like that, and Mambari is extremely smart from what we've been able to tell. It was, I mean, practically talking with, <laughs> with Alistar when they were chatting in my camp, so I don't know what to think about that. I'm also curious about that little quest that I picked up with the, um, with the guy's wife and them not showing him her body. That was suspicious as well. I am quite intrigued and eager to talk about everyone else in the camp. It's just a lot larger than I expected it to be, to be honest with you guys. Um, it's like... Well... We were in the village before, so it was kind of assumed that it was pretty small, but this is a camp. I thought it would be even smaller than that, but it seems maybe, I don't know, twice as large as I can tell right now, at least. <laughs> um, maybe that perception is going to change when I actually get to go around every little corner of it. But for now, uh, it seems big and I... I guess I'm committing to the Elvish, I guess, line of quests for now. I don't know which one is going to come next. I don't know how big this one is going to end up. And uh, also, I don't really know if they have any restrictions on the level of your character or like the difficulty of the content. So I'm going to stick with it. If it's going to be difficult, then it's going to be difficult. We will just have to overcome it. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I had a lot of fun playing through this game yet again. And if you did, please consider leaving me a like and subscribing. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye for now.